Good morning! We are on our fourth lesson for today. Now, we will be talking about poultry handling and fabrication. You can basically use everything. So there's the joint. Snap it. Nagiwalay na yung meat sa bone over on the sides. This is called spatch cocking. Ayun ako, ayun ko talaga na salmonella. Nadali na ako dyan. It's very important that we know the basic handling of chicken and how to fabricate and at the same time know the different types of poultry. There are so many different types of poultry. In poultry handling or basically in any types of food handling, there are four very important simple words that we have to remember. Clean, separate, cook, and chin. Your word na clean, basic yan. Wash your hands with warm, soapy water before and after handling. Any type of raw protein, including your cutting boards, kitchen work surfaces, your knives, your honer. Sa lahat ng gagamitin nyo, when you fabricate or when you handle a raw protein, it's important that you wash and clean your surface or kitchen tops. In between, this is what you have to remember. Let's say, ginamit ko tong chopping board na to for chicken. Hindi na ito yung kagamitin ko chopping board for meat or for seafood. Kung wala kayong ibang chopping board sa bahay, before nyo siya gamitin para sa bagong protein or vegetables, you have to really clean it. As in, hugasan. Hindi pwedeng banlaw lang. Wash it with warm, soapy water. You want to take out that bacteria na galing sa ibang protein para hindi siya mag-transfer sa bagong protein na gagamitin nyo para himain. Next word is separate. To avoid cross-contamination or contaminating other foods, you have to separate raw meat, poultry, seafood, and eggs from other food in your shopping cart and refrigerator. One tip is Dapat sa grocery list niyo, the last item that you will buy is raw chicken. Kasi ayaw niyo mag-build up yung bacteria. What I always do pag nag-grocery ako, pumupunta muna ako sa poultry at seafood section. At saka ibili niyo kay Manong, Manong pakibalik sa chiller after mo siya ma-chop-chop. And then, pag nakompleto niya na yon at nakompleto ko na rin yung grocery list ko, babalikan ko na silang lahat. And then, I'll check out na para hindi nagbe-build up yung salmonella. Do not rinse raw poultry in the sink. When you rinse it, syempre, yung tubig na dumaan sa kanya, mapupunta siya sa sink. Kumakalat lang yung bacteria ng manok sa sink. If you happen to wash your chicken sa sink, you just have to wash also the sink with warm, soapy water after you use it. It can also spread raw juices around your sink or onto your countertops or onto your ready-to-eat foods. Take note kung saan nyo hinandel yung chicken ninyo. Alamin ninyo mabuti na siya lang yung nakalagay dyan. Naka-separate platter siya para alam nyo dun lang siya nag-touch. And when you touch your raw chicken, before you touch your veggies or your pots and pans, always wash your hands. Third word na very important ninyong malaman is to cook. When you cook your poultry, it should be cooked thoroughly. Hindi siya pwedeng half-cooked. Bacteria in raw meat and poultry can only be killed when cooked to a safe internal temperature. It is very important that you also have a thermometer like this. This is so only used for knowing the temperature of your cooked meats can be used in roast beef, in pork, in chicken, in turkey. Malaking factor ito because you want to know the right internal temperature before you slice into it. Kasi kung hindi, pwede yung ibalik para maluto pa siya. The color of cooked poultry is not a sure sign of its safety. Only, of course, by using a food thermometer. That's why a food thermometer is very, very important. Poultry products, please remember, should always be cooked to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That is internal temperature. Leftovers should be refrigerated no more than two hours after cooking. After an hour and a half, kumain, mayroon kayo leftover, tsaka nyo siya ilagay sa refrigerator para i-store. Ngayon, bakit hindi siya pwedeng sumobra ng dalawang oras na nakatiwang wag dito? Because at that time, it'll slowly build up bacteria already. Kahit luto siya, malaki yung factor na pwede siyang mapunta sa pagkain niyo. That's why you have to put it in the refrigerator already and label it. Kung kailan nyo nil niluto, kailan nyo nilagay, keep in mind, leftover food should be consumed within 4 days only. More than that, mayroon na siyang possibility mag-spoil, gumawa na siya ng bacteria sa loob. And of course, the other ingredients na isinama niyo din sa ulam na ginawa niyo, slowly nagre-release na sila. 
ng quality na hindi maganda. But may mga ulam kasi tayo Pilipino. Habang tumatagal, mas sumasara. I suggest, ilagay nyo sa freezer, hindi sa chiller. Ginawa kay Captain America, di ba, nung nag siya. Nag-stop yung time niya. Tapos lahat tumanda siya, bata pa rin. Ganun din yung ulam. Stinop mo yung time na pwede siyang mabulok or mag-spoil. It's also nice that you have a shaving dish whenever you'll have gatherings at home na may maliit na apoy lang sa ilalim just so the temperature would just be there. Hindi tayo magkakreate ng bacteria dahil may heat yung binibigay ng shaving dish. Be particularly careful with foods prepared for infants, older adults, pregnant women, and persons with impaired immune system. Siyempre, ang infants hindi pa sila pwedeng bigyan ng sunny side up egg. Yung pula ng itlog na raw or not thoroughly cooked still has salmonella. You still have to really cook it thoroughly. So it's important na paunang papakain sa bata kung itlog, scrambled egg, para talagang lutong-luto siya, or hard-boiled egg. Pero may possibility na matsok sila pag nasa 6, 7, 8 months pa lang sila. You have to help them, teach them how to eat yung hard-boiled egg. So kailangan binabantay ng mga babies when you want to start eating them. Ay! <laughs> hindi, hindi niya sila kakainin <laughs> Hindi niya sila, wag, hindi kinakain ng bato <laughs> Hindi sila kinakain ha <laughs> Parang may pinag-usapan lang kami ganito kagabi <laughs> Hindi kinakain ng bata When you start feeding them solid food, okay? <laughs> Kasi nga, hindi pa buo yung immune system nila. <laughs> so, kailangan very careful kayo dun sa factor na yon. And our last important word is chill. Pag nakauwi na kayo, ang unang-unan yung dapat na ilagay sa chiller or dapat i-freeze din nyo is your poultry. Bago nyo siya i-freeze, isegregate nyo na. Para hindi nyo kailangan tanggalin yung buo, tapos sa thaw ninyo, babalik nyo na naman. No, you cannot do that. Portion, portion. I-portion nyo na siya based sa kung paano nyo siya gagamitin. Take note, halimbawa, kailangan nyo gamitin yung chicken tomorrow. Mag-alarm kayo sa phone nyo na yung frozen chicken ninyo, ilipat nyo na sa chiller section ng refrigerator ninyo. Just make sure na properly enclosed siya or talagang nakarap siya ng maayos para yung drippings niya hindi mapupunta sa ibang nakalagay sa refrigerator ninyo. Kasi yun talaga, kakalat talaga yung salmonella dyan. Pag nangyari yun, you'd have to take everything outside in your refrigerator. And then, yun, i-disinfect nyo yun, isi-sanitize nyo yun. Thaw frozen poultry in the refrigerator or in a cold running water, hindi room temp. Pag dun nyo siya, sinotho, nare-rinse off niya yung bacteria. Wala siyang chance na mag-build up. Alam mo yung feeling ng bacteria na, eto na, eto na, pa-build up na kami eh, mayroong tubig na malamig. So, maliligwak na sila. Mapupunta na sila sa drain. Or sa cooler na may yelo. Kung nagagastos ang kayo or masyado kayo maraming kailangan ito, you can always use that. How about the frosting in the microwave? Meron naman siyang settings. I also do that. But, when I do that, I make it a point na nakaredy na lahat ng ginawa ko. Properly stored siya sa microwave. Merong instructions naman ng microwave kung ilang minutes per pound ang kailangan. Ang ayoko lang, pag nagtutuwa sa microwave, there's always a chance or possibility na parang half-cooked na yung ibabaw niya. Hindi siya talaga nagre-retain ng freshness. Kung halimbawa mag-marinate na kayo ng chicken ninyo, always remember, after marinating your ingredients, you have to put them sa chiller up until the time that you will use them already. Not sa room temperature. Ang room temp na marination, doon talaga lumalabas ang build up ng bacteria. Then, at the same time, maglalabas na siya ng salmonella. Ayun, ako, ayun ko talaga ng salmonella. Nat nadali na ako dyan, kaya paulit-ulit ako ng sinasabi. Poultry has a very neutral flavor. So, when you marinate it for at least two days, pasok na pasok na yung lasa niya. Do not place cooked poultry on the same plate used for raw marinated chicken. It's basic. Ba, ito ginamit ko na to, raw yung chicken ko. Pag naluto na yung manok ko, hindi pwedeng dito ko rin siya uli papalik. Parang binalik ko lang din siya sa chance na magkaroon siya ng bacteria buildup at salmonella. At that point, kailangan nyo na siyang ibalik uli dun sa griller or sa oven. That's why it's important hindi kayo maggagamit ng isang plate para sa raw at sa naluto na. Guilty tayong lahat sa part na to. I'm sure. Makinig kayo mabuti. Pag nagigrill tayo, ilan sa inyo na ipinambabrush din yung marinade sa 
raw na protein. Hindi ko naman kayo masisisi kasi at some point, ginawa ko rin naman yan. Kasi yun ang nakasanaya ko. Yun ang nakikita ko. Yun yung akala ko tama. Pero, mali, mali, mali. Automatic, magbe-build up yung bacteria sa raw protein. Kahit nagbamarinate siya. Pag niluluto niya na siya, namamatay na yung bacteria. Dapat, yung marinade na ginawa natin for the raw proteins, it should be boiled first. And then, pag kumulo na siya, nag-rapid boil na siya, patayin nyo. Just to make sure that there's no more bacteria build up. Ngayon, pag ang binis niyong marinade is the marinade na hindi niyo pinakuluan, you are just doing the bacteria a favor. Binabalik niyo lang siya sa pagmamahal niya dun sa protein na nagbigay ng bacteria, di ba? Our next chapter is, what is salmonella? And of course, alamin natin ano ba ang types of poultry. Poultry is usually thought of being just for chickens. Poultry has a wide range of variety. Meaning, the definition of poultry is simple. Any bird that is raised for their eggs or meat is defined as poultry. Any domestic edible bird. Ito yung nagwawales, nagluluto, naglilinis, naglalaba, ganyan. <laughs> What are the domesticated edible birds? Of course, there's chicken, there's duck, quail, turkey, pigeons, ostrich, and geese. Quail is also classified as a squab. Actually, yung quail yun yung pinakamaliit. Kadalasan, ang quail sinaserve yan ng single portion dahil nga masyado siyang maliit. Parang ganyan lang yan kaliit eh. Tapos pag fabricate pa siya, para na siya lumalabas pag sinerve sa'yo, parang halos um, degustasyon type na siya or single serve o d'oeuvre. Though yung d'oeuvre is mas maliit. Pigeon, ginagamit din yan sa mga ibang bansa. Like in France. So when you say poultry, it's not just one. Poultry, one of the most common eaten proteins for a good reason. Why? Because it's lean. Diba pag nagda-diet or gusto mo mong pakafit, always chicken breast, always white meat. It's plentiful. When you say plentiful, meaning malaman siya. Yung buong manok, halos lahat ng parts niya magagamit mo. Magagawa mo siya sa iba't ibang klaseng ula. It has a neutral flavor that lends itself to be easily marinated. Wala siya halos lasa. So napakadali niya gawan ng andar. What is salmonella? Basically, salmonella are a group of bacteria. Iyon ang tawag sa bacteria that cause a wide spectrum of diseases. They're able to cause significant morbidity and in some cases, mortality in both humans and animals. Paano nabubuo ang salmonella? It is actually passed from bird to bird, most commonly through dropping or through pupo. <laughs> Tawang-tawa yung asawa ko sa kalokohan niya. <laughs> Kasi nga, pag ang bird, dumikit sa isa pang bird, pwede sila magkahawal. <laughs> hindi ako makakonsentrate. Okay. Most commonly through droppings. Hindi naman porket magkatabi silang ganyan, nagkahawaan na sila. Hindi. Yung pupu nila, yun yung pwedeng mag-cause ng salmonella from one bird to another bird. <laughs> Ano yung symptoms? How do you know pagka feeling mo nagka-salmonella ka? Nakakain ka ng raw na chicken or half-cooked chicken or chicken that's not thoroughly cooked. In a restaurant, kapag halimbawa kung order kayo ng buong manok, hinati ninyo may dugo pa or may flesh pa na medyo pinkish, kailangan nyo ipabalik. The chefs would understand why because it's basic. Pinag-aaralan niya sa culinary school. Dapat hindi talaga nagsaserve ng raw chicken ang mga restaurants. Salmonella can cause gastroenteritis, meaning inflammation of the gut. Iyon ang sakit ng tiyan mo that could lead to diarrhea, vomiting, fever, and abdominal cramps. These symptoms may last up to 7 days. Feeling ko iyan yung nangyari sa akin nitong nakaraang quarantine. Hindi ko maisip bakit ako parang biglang Nagdayariya. Hindi lang yung mga sinabi ko ha. Marami pa. That's why it's important to educate yourself. Lalo na sa panahon ngayon that we are looking after na huwag tayong magkaroon ng bacteria, germs, or viruses sa loob ng pamamahay natin. Siyempre magsisimula din yan sa pag-handle properly ng mga pagkain natin. If you are the type of a person that na talagang mababa ang immune system. It's always important that part of your vitamins daily is probiotics to strengthen your gut. Especially sa matatanda. Sa mga bata, simple probiotic drink, 
carry lang. Pero, pag ang probiotic na tininit nila ay mas mataas pa, mas magiging healthy ang mga anak natin. Ang pagkakaroon ng matibay na gut, sasama ang buong katawan mo doon. So, that is salmonella. Chapter 3, knowing cooking time and roasting time of your poultry and fabrication. Well, let's talk about the cooking time. So, we have different types of chicken. I have here duck, a chicken that's 873 grams. Tayo lang dito sa Pilipinas ang mayroong tinatawag na spring chicken or Cornish game hens. Basically, these are the chicken that is 750 to 800 grams. Ito, this is classified as spring chicken already. Ganito siya kaliit. Ang Cornish game hen naman, mas maliit pa dito. 250 grams to 290 grams. That's the Philippine classification. So, ito, Philippine classification kasi umabot siya hanggang 1.3 na kilos. Ito, 1.5. A USDA classification ranges from 2.4 kilos to 3.7. How do you cook a full chicken when you roast it? It varies, okay? Hindi po rin isang buong manok magbabari siya ng 45 minutes cooking time. Rule of thumb, Per kilo of um, chicken, you have to cook it for 45 minutes. Let's say 1.595 grams. 45 minutes plus 25 minutes. Yun yung cooking time niya pagka ni-roast niyo siya. Pero pag convection oven ang ginamit niyo, ito yung may hangin. You have to reduce your cooking time to 40 to 30% kasi mas mabilis yung pag-distribute ng heat sa inyong chicken. 160 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. Before you take the temperature, you take it out of your oven, you let it rest. You get your temperature, you insert it in the thickest part of your chicken. Jan. Jan siya dapat tinutusok. Pero dapat, nag-cool down na siya or nag-rest na siya na 5 to 8 minutes. Kasi kapag kakinuha niyo yung temperature ng pagkalabas sa pagkalabas ng oven, automatic talaga, ang makukuha niyo is the temperature that you're looking for. You have to allow it to rest that is the right temperature of your chicken. Meaning, totoo yung pagkakaluto ng loob niya. Yung temperature niya sa loob, stable na. At yung juices niya, bumalik na. So, hindi kayo niluloko ng inyong thermometer pagka ganun. Pwede na tayo mag-fabricate. I love fabricating chicken. And I want to share this knowledge to you guys. When you learn how to fabricate a whole chicken, I would always advise you to get fresh, whole chicken. Maganda rin na alam niyo mag-fabricate ng manok dahil parami kayong magagawang klaseng cuts sa kanya. And at the same time, wala kayong tinatapon. And Hello. Yung fact or yung thought that you actually fabricated your own chicken is a reward on its own. Masaya kaya siya. It's fulfilling. Okay, this one, dahil ginamit ko na sa chicken, I will just wash this. This is not naman considered a single-use plastic. But you have to thoroughly clean it with warm soapy water, disinfect it. Pinupuno ko siya ng warm water na may lemon. Papasok ko siya ng mga 5 to 10 minutes and then i-air dry ko na siya. Basta ito plastic na to, pang manok na lang siya. Hindi ko na siya ginagamit pang ibang klase pang protein. So I have here spring chicken. Ito yung talagang juicy kasi nga bagets pa siya. So how do you spatchcock? Nakagaya siya. Normally you'll see chickens na naka-spatchcock sa mga restaurants that would serve whole chicken Let's say that's good for two or three. When spatch cocking, make sure that wala itong leeg. Ito, linis na yung loob niya. Just make sure na yung loob niya ay wala ng mga fats. Or yung mga ito, that's considered fat. But since nakadikit siya, okay lang naman yan. Kasi magre-render siya ng fat sa loob and it gives your chicken that juicy finish. So we will cut this open with the scissors. Kasi nga, baby pa naman siya. So malambot pa to. Cut it here. This is called spatch cocking, ha? And then what you do is you take it from here, your hands yon sa ilalim na ganyan, and then you just snap it. When you hear that snap, yon. Isa snap niyo yung dito niya. Ay hindi pala, ito pala yung pakpak niya. Yung dito niya. Yung hita niya. <laughs> pakpak, hita. Ito yung in-snap natin ganyan. So that's actually spatchcock as easy as that. 
Itong spatch cooking, I love doing this. Especially pag nagmamadali ako magluto. Kasi pag ginigrill ko to, naglalagay ako ng mabigat na item sa ibabaw. Para makip yung shape niya. Pag tinanggal nyo na yon at binaliktad nyo, ganyan na siya for life. One more thing that I know you want to know is trussing. So we have the wings, we have the thigh, and ito yung leeg. Before you stuff your chicken, make sure that it's clean. Wash it under running water. A good chicken is a chicken that's actually shiny. It has a firm, plump texture and plump na meat. Skin of the chicken is pinkish. Firm dapat siya. Hindi siya dapat nagre-wrinkle na ganyan, okay? So what I'll do is I'll take out the leeg because itong leeg na to, you can actually use this for gravies, for sauces. Take that out. Or in chicken stocks. What's important also is you take this out. Ito yung puwet niya eh. Ay na nga ito yung ilong ko. Pagkasabi ko nung puwet. Daddy, pakamot naman ang ilong. Talaga ba? Oo. Baka ito yung ilong ko. Baka maatsing ako. Ay, talaga sa kanan. Huwag mo pindutin. Huwag mo tayo yung ilong. Ay, ano? Like inside? Ay, sila yung puwet. Where? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Can you hold it? Thank you. So, this part, na to, you want to take this out. I'll show you why. This part, na to, you don't want that because anjan yung paet ng manok. And once you were able to take it out, you will see this ill, this ill, that yellow thing. Ma paet yan. Diyan dumadaan ang dapat dumadaan pagkatapos kumain. Ayaw natin kainin yan, di ba? Though may mga gustong-gusto kumakain ng isol or ng puwet ng manok, it's very important na wala ito pag kinain yung manok because it's actually inside the skin of the chicken. Hindi siya nahuhugasan. Kailangan talaga siyang tanggalin. Yung naiwan na yan, yan ang huhugasan natin. So, hugasan ko itong chicken na to. Meron akong lababo dito, pero meron din akong bowl. Kasi baka sabihin nyo, sinabi mo maghugas sa sink. E ba't siya naghugas sa sink? Meron po akong panalo. And then, isasanitize namin yung lababo later. You're probably wondering, bakit white ang gamit niyan? Chopping board. Akala ko ba ang white na chopping board ay pang daily? Ito na po kasi yung nagamit kong chopping board for chicken and wala na ako ibang kulay. But ito na yung ginagamit ko for chicken. Wala na ako ibang pinagagamitan sa kanya. At wala naman ako sa restaurant. Nasa bahay naman ako. At ang dami kong explanation, di ba? I will dry muna my chicken just so it's easier to handle. Important, when you start to trust your chicken, pasok ang kanyang wings. Nakagano siya. And then, papasok niyo siyang ganyan sa loob, di ba? Dapat ang manok pag trinas pala nakaganyan. So, dito natin magsisimula ng pag-tali ng manok. So, I have here, ano English ito, bag? Uh, atale. Eh, hindi siya English, di Tagalog. So, siguro mga dalawang twine, roasting twine. So, itong dalawang legs, papag-dequatro niyong ganyan. Pantayin niyo lang yung dulot-dulo ng inyong tali. Ilalagay niyo siya sa ilalim. Like that. And then, ito mismo, i-ganyan nyo. So, nakatali na siya. Tali na siyang ganyan. This is right after you stuff your chicken. Let's say, ako, I would normally roast my chicken with lemon inside, bulb of garlic, and rosemary, and salt and pepper. Tsaka ko siya itatrust. And then, move under on the sides. There are different types of how to truss a chicken. It's up to you on which is more convenient or easier for you to do. Make sure yung leeg nasa loob or kung wala siyang leeg medyo, yung balat niya ay nakaseal for moist. And then over, over on the sides. So dito tayo sa gitna niyang ganyan. And then under your chicken like that. And then, dito. Diyan ko siya pinadaan, oh. So, that's one way of trusting your chicken. And just tie a knot around it, okay? Isisecure nyo lang siya ng knot. Normally, ito double knot ko siya. You can marinate this ng buo na may stuffing na sa loob. Or, what I would normally do is use skin. In between the skin and the meat, binubutas ko siya, doon ako naglalagay ng butter. Masaya. So you have your whole chicken that's trust. Lagay natin dito, so that's your trust 
chicken. So we now move on to fabrication. 1.595 grams of whole chicken. Ito yung fabricate natin. What I love about fabricating a chicken is you can basically use everything, all parts of the chicken, including the carcass. Walang tapon, kahit may yung buto niya, pwede mong magamit. And it actually gives you a very good chicken stock. Mas masayihin muna natin siya para lang makuha natin lahat ng maayos niyang laman. Ano yung take out natin ulit? Part ng isol ito. Better kung makuha niyo siya lahat sa isang pagtanggal ng hiwa. Ganun yun. Basta may nakikita pa kayo ni Yelo, tanggalin nyo. Leeg niya. Yeah. I'll just rinse my chicken again. Woo! So, ito na yung chicken fabrication na tinatawag natin. How will you get two pieces of each part of the chicken? You need to have two wings, dalawang hita, dalawang thigh fillet, tapos breast, and the carcass. You can also get two pieces of chicken tenders. There are different ways to fabricate a chicken. There's one na tinuro sa amin ni Chef Jean is what you'll do is kasama na yung leeg niya. Gawan niyo siya ng margin. Sa backbone. So, importante ang kitchen scissors. Pwede naman din kuchilyo but I just find this more convenient to use. Get ko na ang aking chef's knife. or a cleaver. So there's the backbone. This is good for chicken stocks, sauces, and soup. So now, tanggalin niyo lang itong mga taba-taba niya. Yan. Hindi niya naman magagamit yan. Turn it over. And snap the chicken once you've turned it over. Para easier for you to identify kung saan yung joints niya. So we have here, quartered leg, no? So the whole quarter, just make sure that naayos niya yung skin para when you begin to slice it or chop it. So from here, slice or slip. And dyan niya siya tatanggalin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, nakita niyo natanggal na. Sa part na to, may mapapansin kayong parang buto. Ito. Ito yung buto niya. Diyan nyo siya pwedeng simulang tanggalin. So, this is your quartered chicken. So, para maging dalawang piraso siya, just look for the joint. Ito yung joint. Just snap it. So, there's the joint. There. Then, it would be easier for you to actually chop your chicken your drumstick. So you have your one piece of drumstick and your chicken thigh. Did we it again on the other side? Yan, tanggal yun na siyang ganyan. Joints. It's easier to manipulate already. And then, ganyan, click din ulit. Put it back para bumalik yung balat niya. Para pag hiniwa nyo siya, yung balat niya, hindi na stretch. Okay, so, you now have two pieces of drumstick and two pieces of chicken thigh. And now, for the wings. Ganun din, snap its joint. Ito yung joint na sinasnap natin, ha? And then, make slits until you get to the joint of your chicken. So, that is your chicken wing and two wings so now ang natira is the chicken breast ito pwede nating tanggalin yung balat niya slowly and gently take out this itong mga lited lited niya yan yung nagdidikit sa balat and sa meat yung film na yan you take it out this is for, ano ha, chicken breast fillet that's lean. Marami actually different cuts ang chicken. There's chicken lollipop, there's french cut. Take out this 
white stuff. You don't need that. That's extra fat. And yung balat, pwede nyo gamitin mga pang stir fry. Chicharon! Balat ng chicharon! Hindi siya maklasify as healthy balat dahil balat pa rin siya. Pero at least hindi siya kasing taba ng baboy. So there's your chicken skin. Let's also take this out. Linisi natin yung mga puti-puti na yan. Take this out. Yes, nahubaran na ang manok. Yan talaga ang lesson natin yun. Paano magkubad ng manok? Para makuha natin yung chicken breast fillet. Ang chicken, meron siyang parang malambot na part dito sa area na to. Just a slit. Para walang sayang. There. So, hihimas-himasin nyo siya. Para... Ayan, natatanggal, basically, naghiwalay na yung meat sa bone. That's the wish bone over there. Ito yung pinag-aagawa natin ng mga bata tayo, diba? So, carefully, 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 slip. There. Tinatanggal nyo lang siya sa buto. Yun na lang naman ang gagawin dito. Wala nang extra. So, yung iba, sa ibang French restaurants, they leave the peklat. They... Hindi <laughs> sa peklat. They leave the bone, this bone. They call it French cut. But normally, they would just use it for under factor. Take this out. So, this part, this is gonna be part of your soup stock already. So, you now have a beautiful piece of chicken breast fillet. And then, pag tinanggal nyo tong part na to, this is called the chicken tenders. Yeah, This is used for chicken fingers. And this is your chicken breast. Let's make the other one para pantay. Make sure na walang sasaya. So, kahit may sumamang konting laman sa buto, okay lang kasi gagamitin naman siyang pang subsak. So, wala kang sinaya. And, nasulit mo yung pera mo kasi nagamit mo lahat ng parte ng manok, di ba? At nakamura ka. Promise, mas mura yung manok na buo. There's also chickens that are called free range, meaning they are free to roam around the farm. Hindi sila yung my cage. So, we take this out. Okay. Out. And then, take this part out also para malinis at pulido ang chicken natin. Tenders. Now, you have two chicken tenders and two slices of breast filet. Huh? Para ako endorser ng chicken breast filet dito. Okay. So, we have two pieces of thigh, two pieces of drumsticks, two pieces of chicken wings, two breast, two tenders, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> So, it is very easy to make. Actually, practice lang ng practice. Marami talaga kayo pwede pang magawa sa chicken. Anyway, mapunta muna tayo sa duck. Why is it easy to cook with duck? Duck has a uh, meat that's color red, right? Mataba siyang poultry. Yan, fat niya lahat yan. Yung part na yan. When you, you cook this piece of beautiful duck breast, you'd have to make a deep slit. Because when you sear this, yung slit na yan, you want that na mag-render out dun sa fat ng duck. And siya na mismo yung magsisilbing mantika para maluto siya. So, it's either you slit it like that or you can slit it like a cross. Then, all the more na mas mabilis siya makapag-render ng fat. And you just sear it over very hot iron skillet pan. Yan. So, there you have a very beautiful piece of chicken duck breast. When you fry it or sear it, it should be skin side down. Then you just allow it to sear until it's actually golden brown, season, and then pop it in the oven. Ang duck, mayroon din siyang temperature na kailangan yung habulin. Like chicken, it's also dapat or 145 degrees Fahrenheit because wala naman siyang bone. Filet naman siya. So class, I hope you've learned something and I do hope na kung paano kaming tumawa dito ng bonggang bongga sa kitchen ko at kung paano ako nag-enjoy na i-impart yung knowledge na natutunan ko with chicken fabrication or poultry fabrication, may nakuha kayo. I am really enjoying every lesson and I really appreciate your time for spending it with me. Thank you so, so much. Always remember, be kind, be grateful, be thankful, and always be positive. Class?
dismissed. Bye guys! Thank you!